Welcome to our preview of the exhibition Worth More Than Many Millions – Fragile Treasures of the Prinzhorn Collection. We are presenting especially fragile works from the historical collection, including several books and journals, which can only be rarely shown and which can no longer be loaned to other institutions. We enter the exhibition through the gallery on the right. The first work we see provides the title for the exhibition. It's a drawing by the merchant Karl Lange from the late 1890s, showing several rows of images in oval frames. The heading reads, Worth more than many millions. The photographically verifiable, interleaving miraculous images in the shoe insoles of the victim, revealing a 15-year-old crime. The drawing contains precious visions, which, according to Lange, he was forced to reproduce as pencil drawings for want of a camera. Turning to the left and entering the main exhibition space, we see a long strip of collaged images created by a patient in a private sanatorium in the Oberdöbling suburb of Vienna, known only by the first two letters of her last name, ST. In 1890, Mrs. St. began gluing margins of newspapers together, which she then drew upon with pencil and colored pencils, passing snippets of details from the newspaper, this long before the technique of collage in the history of art was invented. Why Mrs. St. chose the edges of newspapers to work with is unclear. As a first-class patient, she must have been well off. The collage strip is more than three meters long and contains diverse groups of symbols reminiscent of writing, which, however, are not legible in the usual sense of the word. Opposite this, we find a dark box with an opening to peek into. Inside, we see an ambiguous image an optical illusion, a witch's hat, which can simultaneously be seen as a lake in a landscape, with a row of trees forming the brim of her bonnet, surrounded by buildings. When you illuminate the image from behind, another version appears. The blind eye of the witch begins to see, fish and plants appear in the lake, and the windows in the buildings light up. This optical illusion was created between 1913 and 1917 by August Natterer as a patient in the Rottenmünster Asylum. When we walk around the partition wall, we find this little jacket by Agnes Richter, dated 1895, from the Hubertusburg Asylum. The garment is embroidered all over with autobiographic texts, which are barely legible. A note attached to the jacket explains that Richter treated all her clothing this way. The number 583, which she stitched several times onto the garment, was her laundry ID number. She obviously wanted to be sure that this very personal piece of clothing would be returned to her after washing. Another textile work that was created two years later in Dresden is this embroidered handkerchief by Jane Greer. Clearly legible words indicate that it was a work dedicated to a certain Dr. Wilfür. Greer began her embroidery as a tidy, decorative piece with oval inscriptions in all four corners. But then she went on to attach more and more bundles of embroidery floss to the handkerchief in an apparently random fashion, although one of the loops does seem to form a red heart shape. For 10 years, Franz Kleber, a patient in the Regensburg Asylum, worked on this handmade book until he died in 1908. The text is produced with snippets from the daily newspapers. At times he excerpted entire paragraphs, but most of the book's 30 pages are filled with texts Kleber created out of single words or even single letters. He was obviously not allowed to use scissors, so each snippet was torn from the newspaper, and since he had no glue, he used bread, softened with saliva, to stick them to the pages. That made the book quite attractive for book-eating insects. The texts are difficult to understand. More importantly, the book is a proclamation. Kleber wanted to be taken seriously like printed texts beyond the wall of the psychiatric institution. The two large pencil drawings by Adolf Wölfli, 
the most well-known Swiss patient artist of the 20th century, are done in the years 1904 and 1905 in the Waldau Asylum near Bern and are some of his earliest works. Nevertheless, they already contain nearly all of the artist's signature elements, figures, ornamentation, texts and staves, which do not yet, however, contain the notation of marches and folk dances that would later be common. The Prinzhorn collection was able to purchase these remarkable and rare pieces with support from the Ernst von Siemens Art Foundation, the Cultural Foundation of the German Federal States, the city of Heidelberg, and from private donations. And finally, on the opposite wall, we see watercolors by Else Blankenhorn, a woman from a wealthy Karlsruhe family who, in 1906, became a patient of the private Bellevue Sanatorium near Kreuzling at Lake Constance. These paintings, which show angelic figures and large sums on both sides, are meant to be banknotes. Blankenhorn believed she was, in spirit, the wife of Emperor William II and that, as such, she was obliged to carry out a special charitable work. She intended to finance the feeding of all deceased lovers on Resurrection Day. And so our little tour ends where it began, with vast sums. The works on display, however, are, at least in cultural historical terms, of priceless value.